Hi everyone. Over the past few weeks, a lot of people have reached out to me asking about HDFC Bank, whether the fundamentals and technicals indicate it is investable at these levels for long term or still people should wait. Today is result day. In this video, I'll take you through six points which I think are threats to the HDFC Bank model and also six opportunities which could create immense wealth for HDFC shareholders. This is a fast paced video. Make sure you go through all 12 points because you will not find them in standard investor presentations. They are based upon a lot of my personal research and my near two decades of experience with banks, Indian and international. Let's jump in right away. I'll start with issues first. First point is technology. This is where I've spent most of my working life. HDFC is the largest bank in the country, but in my opinion, its spending on technology is very, very low. Also, the quality of investment is very low. For example, if you go to HDFC Securities, you will see copyright 2017 TCS written at the bottom. Either TCS is too lazy to upgrade their copyright message when they give out a new release or HDFC Securities has not updated their software, a major release in the last seven years. How can banking related software in today's era remain untouched in terms of a major upgrade for seven years? UPI in the last few years has created a serious challenge for core banking. Each and every UPI transaction happens in real time and every transaction, even if it is one rupee, it touches core banking. That too, two times, a debit and a credit. UPI may be a boon for the country, but for banks, core banking operations, it is really, really expensive. Core banking is a sore point for most banks. Most core banking software were returned to two and a half decades back. Not many banks are keen in upgrading them, too many risk. Most core banking still don't run on cloud where they are easy to scale. If you ask a bank to upgrade core banking, the CTO and CIO will have shivers down their spine. My guess based upon the performance, the speed I see as a consumer is it is not upgraded. It is not running on cloud, it runs on-prem and it is pretty much old and outdated. Some UI enhancements, some app enhancements have happened on the HDFC bank side. However, the core remains same. One problem all banks, private or public have in the country is a concept called L1 bidder, where typically an IT project is given or outsourced to a bidder who qualifies all the criteria and is the lowest bidder. In my personal opinion, it's not just HDFC's problem. It is the problem of the country, which leads to a lot of poor usability, a lot of poorly written software and a system that is not easy to use at all. Second problem, a very well documented one, CASA. CASA stands for Current Account Saving Account Balances. It is a generic term for your balances that you maintain with the bank. Currently, most Indian banks are struggling for CASA despite interest rates being high. A lot of citizens are investing into alternate instruments like bonds and equities, real estate. As a result, it is a published fact that the CASA issue is becoming a lot bigger. The loan growth is very high right now. Most banks have their hands full with the loan outgo which means there is a lot of incoming business. To fund that business, banks need money, they need CASA, and they are not able to raise it with ease. HDFC Bank is no different. It is also struggling for balances. Your money, primarily saving bank balance and fixed deposits. Employee attrition, right now, entire Indian banking industry is struggling with attrition at all levels, low, mid, senior. Reported numbers indicate an attrition rate of 35% on average, every third employee of the bank churns every year. Moreover, what I have seen in my personal experience, especially with mid-level RMs is, RMs are jumping from bank to bank to bank because every year jump, they go one level up, the salaries goes up. In their own bank, once they have joined for several years, no promotion, very little increment. So there is enough incentive for bank employees to jump jobs every year, every second year right now. You yourself think if you have a privileged banking with any bank, how many times has your RM changed in the last one year? Next one is digesting the merger. HDFC Bank has still not fully digested the HDFC merger. Recently only, I could access my home loan via HDFC Bank. Still, they are opening HDFC's site via Session Bridge. Does not require a separate login, but a separate portal still exists. 
which means they are still maintaining separate branches, separate staff, separate IT infrastructure. The cost elements of the merger have not synergized yet. HDFC Bank is still incurring enormous amount of cost. Also, the merger has created high degree of anticipation and expectation from customers like me. We keep on harassing our RMs. Oh, you are now HDFC plus HDFC Bank. Why this is not possible? Poor RMs, they have no answer. They have to defend their banks. Next one may be slightly controversial because it is based upon my experiences as well as experiences I have seen of people around me. HDFC Bank, I have found, is very high-handed when it comes to customer interaction and their rules and regulations. Try taking an insurance policy from bank. It is a very harassing process. If you score 99 out of 100, it will take them weeks to process your application. In the end, they will reject the application. It could be insurance policy. It could be home loan. It could be credit card. They find the smallest possible reason, which is less than perfect to reject your application. Unless they are sure that the person will not die, they will not give them insurance. This creates a real sour taste in the mouth of customers. A customer like me, once harassed, will not approach the bank for another similar product in future if they have options. Bank does not realize this. There may be 140 crore people in the country, but if they harass 10 lakh people every year, those 10 lakh people may continue to bank with them, but they may not buy the alternate products from them, which they really want to sell to customers right now. One bad experience turns the customer away, their family away, bad references, bad influencing. Last but not the least, in fact, the biggest problem for HDFC, their holding structure. Most of HDFC bank is held by FIIs and FIIs for whatsoever reason, I'll not go into them into this video, have been selling HDFC for months now. When FIIs buy HDFC, it goes up every day. When FI sell HDFC, it goes down every day. Domestic institutions have been trying to support HDFC bank for months now, but that is barely holding HDFC between 1300 to 1500 level. HDFC is far, far away from 52 week highs. This is when not just Nifty and Sensex, but globally most indices are at lifetime highs. HDFC in the bank needs to make friends with FIs again and make sure that they don't sell the stock. The selling in stock is not just bad for investors, it also impacts the morale of their customers when it comes to high value transactions and big investments. Let's now jump to opportunities. This may be the section you are looking forward to if you are planning to invest in HDFC. The first opportunity is HDB. HDB is the microfinance arm of HDFC Bank. Not many people know it. HDFC Bank has 95% plus stake in HDB. The valuation of HDB is 95,000 crores. And now HDFC Bank is planning to go for an IPO, divest out 10% of the holding. This is the sector which has the largest amount of spread in terms of margins. The typical microfinance loans, be it in villages or with SMEs, are around 20 to 24%. The money is raised by HDFC Bank at 7 or 8%. About 4%, 5% is the cost structure typically in a microfinance loan, lot higher than a normal loan like home loan or a vehicle loan. There are a lot of players, a lot of mature players in this business. I have myself worked in the microfinance industry at the CTO of India's largest microfinance company a few years back. So I have a reasonable idea of the opportunity size, the pie size. This is is a big big opportunity most banks are trying to enter this space the next one is hdfc securities a business worth 18000 crores and not listed yet hdfc again owns about 95 percent in this business more and more people are joining the stock market they trade they invest the population is growing every year crores of indians turn adults and they start investing in some ways they need something like hdfc securities there are a lot of players but it is a big pie it is divided and HDFC Securities has a reasonable size. Being a subsidiary of HDFC Bank, HDFC Securities does has its some advantages, but HDFC Bank needs to capitalize on them. The biggest thing they need to do is upgrade the platform and make it one of the best. At least copy Zeroda and grow. Did you know HDFC has other investments which are not its core businesses worth more than 4 lakh crores. Most of these are what they have inherited from HDFC via the merger. In fact, this valuation will go up a lot because most of these companies have not declared their results. So the valuations are at least one quarter old. Most companies are at lot higher levels than previous quarter at the end of this quarter. HDFC should continue to hold these. In fact, a lot of profit should be diverted by HDFC bank into these investments over time so that this pipe keeps on growing and the other income part of HDFC bank's balance sheet keeps on increasing every day, every quarter, every year. Investors should look for this number and it is a lovely number. Next point, 
synergies from hdfc i talked about the problems these are also the opportunities because the customers of hdfc are available to hdfc bank the unique customers of hdfc bank are available to give a home loan also earlier hdfc limited was an nbfc now the business is a part of the bank huge opportunity also the merger with excite life i don't know whether they just merged all the customers is there any synergy coming up or not they did acquire excite life about two years back not sure what happened after that headline because i had never heard of the word excite life after that hopefully there is something brewing hopefully something will come up in terms of expansion of profit margins via excite life acquisition also do you know in 2020 hdfc bank infused 10 billion rupees in yes bank when it was about to collapse it is worth about 8% in yes bank yes bank has stabilized since then it is probably just getting out of the woods now slightly staring at profits over the years this amount can multiply give multiples to hdfc bank as a 8% shareholder of yes bank last not the least senior citizens trust hdfc senior citizens love hdfc their casa balances their operating relationships their fds continue to be with hdfc bank most senior citizens divide their corpus suppose they have 20 lakh rupees they'll put 10 lakh in hdfc remaining 10 lakh in three other banks no other bank is even 50 percent closer to hdfc when it comes to balances of people who want to keep their money safe and secure who really are paranoid about losing because of a bank closing down by the way no public or private sector bank has closed down in last 10 15 years to my knowledge no big scam no big closure some cooperative banks may have shut down five lakh is in any case guaranteed by rbi for all registered banks against your saving bank and fd balances i wanted to cover the financial numbers of hdfc bank also however it's one o'clock in the night right now i want to conclude this video right now what i'll do is i'll come up with another video once the results are released i'll contrast the numbers pre and post and give my detailed analysis on what the numbers look like my general expectations tomorrow is that hdfc bank's number will look fantastic but it will not be based upon the performance of the core business which is lending and interest most of their growth will come from other income and special line items in my opinion tomorrow the bank will do pretty well on monday because of the result euphoria this will also reflect in icici bank and kotak bank on monday in my opinion remaining let's see how the results go tomorrow especially watch for other investments in the best case this could even cross 5 lakh crore in my opinion plus the income from these assets will go through the roof dividends and if hdfc bank has sold any part of the stakes in any of these investments thanks for watching if you are an existing investor best of luck for tomorrow's results i'll see you in the post result analysis